Hey, hey, welcome back. Uh, we are here. It's Tuesday night, which means it is comic book school live night. And I'm glad to see you here. I'm always glad to see you. But tonight is an extra special night because we're going to be talking about a couple of very important business items that you really need to know if you want to be working in comic books. And of course, comic book school is created for you as a free resource to help you get ahead or step up or improve yourself and to learn the craft and business of making comics. My name is Buddy Scalera and I'm the founder of Comic Book School and I'm glad that you're with us. Um, I have some very big info to share and that is that my co-host Mike Fasolo has joined us again today. Despite all of his better judgment, he came here again to join us. Mike, welcome to the show. Thank you, buddy. It's good to be back again. It's so good to see you again, Mike. I, You know, you are a majorly successful screenwriter. Am I right? You've won a couple of I awards? Got a, couple, a couple of uh, things they call Emmys. Emmys. Three. Three of yes, them. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And as an Emmy Awards winning screenwriter, a uh, brand new day with new lips. <laughs> um, new mouth. <laughs> new mouth. <laughs> Hasn't tried it out. Still breaking in. Uh, but, you, but we met in comic books, right, Mike? Yes, we did. At Wizard Magazine many, many years ago. Yeah. And I think what's important is um, one of the topics tonight uh, will be relevant to our work in uh, at Wizard. Hmm. Well, I'm looking forward to hearing what it is in at wizard i'm just <laughs> going to throw all the prepositions in there at once yeah, why not and speaking of prepositions our one and only english professor mr a a rubin our fiction editor for comic book school a a welcome to the show how are you doing thanks for having me oh, i love your team spirit where'd you get that shirt sure you know some guy gave it to me at comic-con <laughs> did you have to do anything for that shirt I can neither confirm nor deny. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that is the right answer. Uh, hey, have you ever met Mike the Knife Fasolo? I believe we've met uh, once before. On briefly the, here or there. Briefly, yeah. All right. Well, that was yeah. memorable for there both you of you, apparently. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Somewhere in our lifetimes, there has been a crossing of paths. So tonight we're going to be having a couple of features, and both of you will be involved. Uh, tonight we're going to be talking about the business part of comic books. Uh, as it turns out, Image Comics employees uh, announced recently that they have unionized. I'm going to pull this up real quick, and we'll be able to talk about it. I'm going to see how cleverly I can do this. Hold on. I'm going to do a Chrome tab and... Image com comics. There you, I'm trying my best. I'm not You're lying. Doing, you okay. are doing fantastic. There you go. Okay, so Image Comics uh, announced on November 1 uh, that staff members, and, and it is very important to note that these are staffers, and this is why it relates to the work that we did at Wizard Mike, um, voted to unionize, which is actually kind of a big deal. In all the years of uh, working in comics, uh, we've, we've heard of groups talking about unionizing, uh, but this is the first time anybody has ever unionized. And I think it's a very interesting uh, uh, move. I, I, I pass no judgment on either direction uh, to the employer or to the employees, um, but I do think it's an interesting uh, move. Uh, Mike, what are your initial thoughts when you first heard about Image Comics unionizing? Uh, I, I didn't do any research on it because, mm -hmm. of course, why would I be prepared for mm -hmm. anything like this? Um, I have heard about the unionization and I just said, OK, like you, I was like, I hadn't really said it's good or bad either way, but I heard about it and said, sure, OK. Yeah, I think when we were so we worked at Wizard for a good number of years together and it never I don't think it ever crossed my mind and more to my knowledge, was it ever discussed that we would form a union. Did you ever hear of anything of this no, nature? I mean, no. not not at all. What in the in the Image Comics one? Who was it that unionized? Was it like the the assistants or the? Yeah, it's a good question. So let me just editors. yeah, let me just show you. Um, it, it it is a uh, it is a group of um, staff writers, and I'll pull this up. They actually have a website, um, and it shows exactly who unionized. Um, so that they are updating this website. You can see it here with the uh, easy to remember URL, CBW, 
UPDX.com, which I don't know, maybe the, they could have had a better URL, but um, they talk about who exactly signed it. Uh, you see the announcement, uh, we the workers, and then they actually talk about the kind of work they are and who they are. And um, their traffic manager, a production artist, uh, library sales market, content manager, sales coordinator. So you can see, I think there's 11 or 12 people that started it. What was really interesting um, is the show your support page. Um, you can see there's banners and there's a rather long list of people who are listed as their supporters. It just keeps going. Uh, I don't know much about the union uh, or what their grievances were or what their goals are. Um, they do have a, um, you know, a pretty clear list of what they want to accomplish. I can't find it at this point, but suffice to say, you can go to that website yourself and check it out. But unionization is is a pretty big move. Uh, yeah. Ari, um, A.A. Rubin, I should say, as we all know you, your legions of fans know you uh, as A.A. Rubin. Um, you you have belonged or you do belong to a union because your real profession is unionizable. Yeah. Yeah, yes, I, I am a I am a teacher by trade, and um, I am a member of the United Federation of Teachers. I'm actually on a child care leave right now, mm -hmm. um, which I would not have been able to do had there not been a union, because most jobs um, don't have that, especially for uh, especially for fathers. Mm -hmm. But I'm actually not an active dues paying member now because I'm on leave. Um, they're not paying me, so I don't have to pay them. But I still have, I'm still considered part of the union, and um, I have been in the union since 2007 when I first took the job. So just so we're clear, a, a union members generally pay union dues and then they get union benefits. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct. So as a, a union member, a certain you pay a portion that comes out of your paycheck, like your taxes or whatever money you're deferring to your retirement fund or that type of thing. You can see the deduction on your pay stub for union dues. And ex in exchange for that, you get the benefits of being in the union, which at the very least in the unions, the union will collectively bargain your contract. So um, I am not negotiating with the schools that I work in how much money I get paid. It depends on my level of education and my years of experience, my seniority and my years of experience. And that is collectively bargained for every teacher in the system. I do get certain health benefits through the union, um, such as um, our prescription drug plan is through the union, although the other medical benefits are through the city. But generally, unions also negotiate your, um, your health benefits with your employer and uh, that type of thing. And then uh, you also get protection if you have a grievance against your employer, if you feel you've been terminated. So me, yeah. Yeah. Let me pause you there. So, so people join a union uh, because they want to be collectively as a group, as what they would say, a union to uh, protect their interests. Um, and, you know, I, I don't know a huge amount of unions. I did a little bit of research, um, not a lot because um, let's face it, it's a complex topic, um, but you can learn more about unions um, at this website. Um, it's called Union Plus. Obviously they have a, a positive perspective on unions um, and they detail like what, what unions do, how they work. And, and it's actually quite interesting. Um, I started to read through it and got an understanding. I, I, I would imagine that compared to teachers unions and uh, other types of more established unions, uh, that the Image Comics Union is, is rather small and probably just starting up. You, you have to wonder if it will extend to office workers of other kinds for other companies and if they are already reaching out to those companies. Um, we have a message, we have a very active message board and somebody had said that uh, freelancers cannot join unions. And Mike, you are an active freelancer and I know that working in Hollywood, uh, there are quite a lot of unions, uh, writers unions, directors unions. What's the function of unions uh, for those freelance uh, uh, groups of professionals? Well, I think for freelance, it's, it's like you said, you can't really join in because it's, it's not, um, you know, you're not a permanent part of them, even though I, I guess you could even say that some of the writers, though, it would be 
kind of freelance all over the time or all over the place because you mm -hmm. are jumping in and out of different jobs. But I think it's mainly for, you know, if you're writing on a on a show that's, uh, you know, set and it's been going on for two or three seasons, then you can jump on and join the union. But if you're, you know, a freelancer, you're writing just a freelance one off script, you wouldn't be able to to get in. Although for the Writers Guild, there are certain tiers that you have to hit to join the Writers Guild. You have to have so many, as they call them, units of production and shows that have gotten on the air and been produced. And it all depends on if you're animation or live action. It's it's a lot of- And does stuff. animation have a union? I, I know that you're mostly an animation- Yeah, writer, they have right? the, uh, I think it's the, uh, the animation union, like the Cartoonists Guild or the Animation Guild or something. As you can see, I'm very well- <laughs> You're, you're right on top of it. <laughs> Um, but like for, for robot chicken, we, we don't have, we're not involved in the, in the writer's guild. Was the, right? was the lollipop guild, were they a union? Do you <laughs> they think are, they, they are one tier above us. They were. And the yeah, everyone, guild. everyone actually wants to join the lollipop guild. You know, I, from our, uh, from our chat room, Vince, uh, said Joe Schuster must be smiling down on us. I, I, you're probably right, Vince. I think he was one of the original, uh, creators who may have advocated I think, uh, for uh, unionization. Oh, and uh, uh, our producer, uh, Redheaded Ed, uh, yes. also known as D. Alley, uh, provided the Animation Guild link. Uh, I do want to show uh, one more link uh, because I think this is kind of important uh, for those of you who are considering a career in comics. Um, somebody had said you can't uh, be in a union if you are um, a freelancer. And yet, here I found something called freelancersunion.org. Well, uh, and it's corrected. designed. You you sit corrected, <laughs> and it's funny. Look, they're even using comic art. Um, it looks like Lichtenstein uh, type of art, and and it does talk a little bit about how freelancers can unionize. Um, again, you know, I freelanced uh, for many many years, and. Um, have been on staff for many, many years. And I, I was never approached to unionize, but obviously, you know, things have evolved. Things have changed. The uh, The way we do business has changed. Um, AA, when you think about uh, how you uh, have been part of the union as, as a teacher, is, is is every teacher part of the union or is it, um, or is it uh, optional? Well, 99.9% .9 of teachers, probably more than that, are part of the union. The default is that you're part of the union. I think there technically is an option to opt out. I have never met anyone who has done so. Um, generally, teachers, at least in my um, my city, have good benefits, and people want to take advantage of that. That's one of the main draws of the job. You, you know, and, Mike, what, what I find great is that it was 99.9%, .9 and he goes, maybe even more. And then I thought, yeah. he's an English teacher. Yeah, he's an English teacher. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, AA. So yeah, you, no it, 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 yes, I would say I would say everybody who I've ever worked with has been a part of it. I think there technically is an opt-out if you want to, but... Um, but I've never met anyone who's taken advantage of that. Yeah, when I was when I was working my way through uh, medical school, and uh, I, I actually worked construction, and I was a laborer, and there's a laborers union in the construction business. I ended up not opting to because I, I was mostly just summer help. But I, I did I did have some interactions with the union, and they did you know they had a, a, a steward, and they had people who uh, looked out for the union. So. Um, interesting stuff. I don't know where it will lead. This is a day-by-day -day, uh, update. You can follow the uh, new union. I'll share one more screen um, on Twitter. Uh, they have a Twitter account. Um, actually not doing too bad considering they're, they're less than a month old, uh, 7,202 followers. So if you want to learn more about the union and what they're doing and the information that they're sharing and the news that they're making, uh, you can check them out on Twitter or at their website. I think the key thing uh, about this is that the comic book business is changing uh, and the way we work is evolving. And And for those of us who are in the business, I think it will impact all of us. Uh, what say you, Mike Fasolo? I think uh, you said it all. I did say it all. So we learn something new every day. 
And oh, Andy Siebert. Oh, uh, Mary M is on the teachers union as well. And oh, Andy Siebert. That's right. He's a teacher as well. You know, Siebert's a, a school teacher as well. Yes. Yes, I know right? that. Yeah, Siebert. He's yeah. Uh, the artist on uh, our very own creator-owned comic book, Midlife Crisis, something that Mike and I are currently going through uh, together. <laughs> yes. I'm on the downward spiral. Yeah, when quickly. you when you age up a little bit, AA, you will also be on your midlife crisis. And hey, Andy, by the way, hi, how are you? Um, you know, AA, the, the reason we have you here among many, uh, and because we adore you so much, uh, is that you went out and did an interview with uh, two creators from Ahoy Comics who were working on a comic book and you asked them a little bit about their process. You wanna tee up the video that we're about to show. Yep, so I spoke with uh, Mark Russell and Stuart Moore, two mm -hmm. of the writers on Edgar Allan Poe's Snifter of Death from Ahoy Comics. They both write um, serial stories in there. Um, Stuart's story is about Edgar Allan Poe when he was a kid, his kind of origin story of Edgar Allan Poe. And Mark's story is about, it's called Serial Monsters. It's about breakfast cereal mascots. And uh, he has a whole world about that. Uh, it's really fun. So, And just uh, like if you were in Hollywood on a real talk show, AA, we're going to roll that clip. What do you say, Mike? Should we roll the clip? Roll the clip. Do you have any advice, um, either of you, for aspiring creators about writing characters who are who are either historical persons like Poe or who are well known outside of your stories, like these uh, serial mascots? How do you balance the authenticity with your own creativity? For me, I, I, I like to build, when I'm writing about a, a story about a character that already exists. I like to think about the cultural equity that that character already has and think about what it is that I, that I like about that character. What about it is that, that people recognize about that character that means something to me. And then I build my sort of own take on them around that. Um, but I think that you, when you're working with characters who are existing intellectual property, you have this cultural equity, you owe it to people to, you owe it to the character to be sort of true to their nature but you owe it to everybody else to do something sort of new and interesting with it and not just be a tasteful homage to what has come before. So how do you uh, strike that balance? If I wanted to write about maybe not a serial because you're doing that, but if I wanted to do something like that, how would you advise striking that balance? I usually what I do is I make a couple notes, uh, two or three notes about what it is about this character that I like that everybody else would recognize about that character. Things that I have in common with anybody else who was watching this character. And then I just build the rest of the story around those two or three things. And the rest of the story is gonna be my innovation. It's gonna be me coming up with a story that's never been told before, saying some things about that character and the world they live in that's never been said before. But as long as I start with those notes that anchor it in the, the nature of that character, I feel like I am, th there's a reason for that, that the story to be about that character. And I'm kind of striking that balance between both honoring what's come before and bringing something new to the table. And Stuart, with a historical character, especially one as well known as Poe, I imagine it's similar. <laughs> well, um, by the time I got to this, again, we've, um, this is the fourth series of the Poe anthologies we've, we've been running. And, um, Tom and Tom and the various other writers have pretty much established th their own sort of drunken caricature version of Poe. And I kind of ran with that, but I wanted to show him as a kid and I wanted to show him, I wanted to do sort of a, um, a, uh, a, a pastiche of like boys adventure stories where a, a kid is on his own for the first time. And in this story, he's adopted a pet raven just running around, uh, running around the countryside. Um, I didn't worry very much about, I, I did do some political, some research just in terms of uh, exactly what age when it would have been that Poe was this particular age and what technological advancements did not did or did not exist. Um, but I always sort of look at that sort of historical research as a starting point um, because I, I, I kind of feel like you do it not so that you can be scrupulously accurate, but so that you know when you're not being scrupulously accurate. So you can you can take certain liberties. Um, and the nature of the my story in particular is pretty farcical. So um, it, it I, I felt a little freer to um, 
to to go off the rails a little uh, although rails weren't invented yet so that was uh, that, that was that was one of the things i had to deal with um but um but I, I i took more liberties than i probably would have with a more straight story um that was meant to be um that was meant that was that was meant to be more of a drama as opposed to a farce Congratulations, AA. You've uh, you did a great job unpacking uh, their writerly approach, and it was uh, genuinely educational. Thanks for uh, interviewing uh, that team, and and also thanks to uh, Hannah and David for from Superfan Promotions for setting that up for us. So uh, great job, AA. Um, but now we introduce a new segment to the show, guys, something brand new that I didn't prepare you for. And the people here should be aware that you have no idea what's about to come. We have a new part of the show. And I will tell you that when I show this graphic, D. Alley, the graphic <laughs> designer, will die a little bit inside uh, because I did do it myself. This is the CBS Live educational moment. You can see I actually put my very own clip art in there. <laughs> And today's <laughs> lesson is the language of comics. So you guys have not been prepped ahead of time. This is going to be a quiz. And people in the audience, you're allowed to answer. If you answer before our um, our, our guests, you win a prize. I have no idea what that prize is. Um, are you ready? And, and AA, if you know it, or Mike, if you know it, you just shout it out. You ready? Yep. This form of communication Wolverine. is... <laughs> <laughs> no, no, this form of communications is called not Wolverine. This form of communication. <laughs> oh my God, he knew the answer. Whoa, did anybody get it in? Oh no, you you won. Do I get the prize now? You get the you get the you get to keep that shirt. Well, there That's you go. Wolverine. That was Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer was onomatopoeia. How am I supposed to know what that is? It, it is uh, it is essentially uh, using lettering to imitate a sound effect that you will recreate in your mind. So in your mind, your your snicked sound is very clear to you. Uh, but using the word snicked for the sound snicked is called onomatopoeia. Mm. The word who the does, word sounds the snick. word sounds like the. Uh, the word sounds like what it means is that's right technical definition a a rubin rocking in great i job. should have been a teacher now, yeah well you could have <laughs> we gotta I'll, I'll pull out the uh, dictionary of literary terms next time onomatopoeia onomatopoeia so uh thanks for uh participating tonight a <laughs> a rubin you rocked it two big segments uh, thank you so much. I'm going to put you back into the green room, A.A. Rubin. Everybody, round of applause for A.A. Rubin uh, for the great work he did, uh, and special thanks uh, to our writers for joining us tonight. So, Mike. Yes. We had a special guest. We had a, a we rolled a clip. We talked about a mature topic, and we even had an educational moment. It's actually starting to feel like a real show. Come on. Come on, don't don't get ahead of yourself, bud. Yeah, and the and the and the and the chat room went crazy. The chat room went crazy. Yeah, somebody People, said uh, Philip Burnett said I was very close, and I was. Well, Phil, to Philip Burnett, you were close. He was like, you know what? He was like, it is Wolverine. It, and that's, is Wolverine. it wasn't actually the wrong answer, <laughs> to be fair. Um, but um, we have a part of the show that is scientifically proven <laughs> to be the most awesome part of the show, and it is called Check This Out. And what makes it special is also the back teeth. D. Alley's back teeth begin to grind, <laughs> and her molars are cracking because I designed these myself. I could ask for help, but I do not. No. Why? No. Why bother? No. So this week, I'm I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go first. Is that okay if I go first? Yes. Have at it. So in the movie theater is the movie Shang-Chi. Um, and I, I am a big fan of these collected editions. And Shang-Chi appeared in uh, this epic collection. This is epic collection number one uh, that ranges from 1973 to 1975. The cool part of this is in the backup materials, they have all this cool educational stuff, all this neat collateral foreign editions. And if you buy this, you get to read all the stories. Um, one of the things I really, I really like is when they show you the um, 
the pencil art. This is actually the original art pencil art show that you can see along the edges are notes uh, about printing. Uh, and I find that to be really interesting. And I feel like this is a great check this out uh, because it's in the movie theaters and it has educational value. Mike, I'm sensing a theme here of educational value on comic book school. Well, that will end with me. Well, good. So <laughs> let's pull up the graphic again. Mike, what do you have for check this out? I have a uh, another um, uh, uh, Teen Titans. No, I didn't. Do, I didn't do Teen Titans yet. This no, you haven't one. done Teen Titans. Uh, this is Teen Titans, a uh, trade um, of the future is now. It is called, and it, buddy, it ties into one of your favorite things: time travel. Oh my God! Yes, the Titans. They get they get sucked into the 31st century. You see the Legion of Superheroes, and they get thrown back into the past, but it's into their future. So they meet the future Titans of what they become. It is it is and one of the who, best stories. Everyone in the ever. audience here enjoys time travel stories. Everyone, feel free. No, feel yeah. free to shout out if you don't like. Oh, look at that! But does it have an an ad for X ray? Mine it, does. Mine, I don't know if mine. Superboy does. has X ray specs. So yes, yes, yes. <laughs> you could. Now and 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 um, and actually, this was this was uh, Philip who was who was adding a little bit of encouragement to you tonight. He's he's cheering behind you tonight. Yes, as everybody he, should. He's in your corner. Oh, who's, um, who's that? Glenn T. Gotilla. Glenn. I, ah, good. Glenn T. Gotilla. <laughs> I'm sorry for saying your name incorrectly, but Glenn, <laughs> I agree. I don't like time travel movies. I don't like time travel comics. I don't like time travel anything. You're missing out. I know I'm missing out, but you know what? Um, and, and actually, you know Jeff Johns, right? I do know Jeff Johns. Personally, yep. And yes. he's a comic book writer. He does screenwriting. Hold that one up again. I think I, I'm not a big fan of Teen Titans. I was when I was a teen. Uh, and they first came out. I will tell you that uh, I read that run. Uh, Mike McCone is a fantastic artist, and, and Jeff Johns did a really good job with that. Yeah, this um, is probably my favorite Titans group. Right. Oh, uh, look at this. Mariam is calling me, and the time in. I didn't say it was the time travel in. It was called the time in. Uh, Marianne's reference is, of course, Mike, of the um, of the award winning anthology. Do I have a picture of it here? I've never heard it, of it. It no, all right. Well, I wish I was able to pull it up quickly. I thought we had a, a picture of our award winning anthology, uh, or soon to be another award winning anthology, but but I don't. But I do have <laughs> onomatopoeia. That's, <laughs> <laughs> That's all I got. That's all I got. Oh, and and I agree with Philip. You learn something new every day. Uh, some of us learn a lot of new things every day. <laughs> So some of anyway, us don't learn anything. Some of us managed to not get <laughs> through the day without made. knowing anything. Anyway, um, I think that's it for the show. If uh, people are enjoying the show, uh, they should. Oh, look at that! Thank you so much for providing that. Um, let's see. Yep. Okay. There you go. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. There you go. All right. Look at that! I don't know. All what right. I don't know. Are. What, I don't. Are they just keep things. popping up. I don't. I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, uh, if people are enjoying the show, they should click like and subscribe so they don't miss an episode. We promise to try harder each time to make the show more fulfilling. No? No. Try, yeah. Come on. Trying hard. That's, that requires gave, effort, bud. I gave this 10 minutes of preparation. That was, that was that's good. Even more, that's I'm, even more in, I'm impressed. You. Yeah. Um, oh, look at this. This is the anthology link. It's right there in the chat room if anybody wants to go and read it. It's a free download. So uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. I look forward to seeing you every week. And um, and your comments are most welcome. Please uh, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the little alert button. Uh, for Comic Book School, this is my good friend, Mike the Knife Fasolo. I'm Buddy Sclera, Comic Book School founder. And we will see you next Tuesday because we own Tuesdays. Good night, everybody. Thank you.